We'll welcome all uh, Melbourne Victory directors, corporate partners and media partners to today's major announcement. Uh, there's a, a great um, gathering of people here today and Melbourne Victory has a proud history, history and uh, of many achievements and uh, we continue today to build this club on and off the field and it's a significant moment in our history as we announce Mark Milligan as our 2013-14 captain. Mark follows directly from Adrian Layer and Kevin Musket and uh, we're proud to have both of them here in the official handover as we build the history and the culture of this club. Yeah, obviously a significant um, announcement for us uh, this year. Um, uh, at the end of last year we did a review of uh, our season and obviously falling short of our target we, we needed to, to try and get better in all areas and um, you know, one, of the, one of the things we wanted to do was to challenge our players again. I'm really mindful of uh, our football club and our players, particularly in this country, becoming complacent and uh, we threw a challenge to a couple of players. One to uh, Adrian Leia, who was a, you know, was a skipper through some pretty tough times at this football club, particularly uh, uh, the last couple of years has been a lot of change. He's been the one constant and uh, the challenge to him was to, to now take his football to another level. and try and play the best football of his career and, and really concentrate on that and help us be successful and the other challenge was to Mark who also had an outstanding year last year but I believe has a lot more in him and I think the responsibility of uh, leading our club will hopefully take his game to another level so I guess uh, from my way of thinking it was, a, it was a challenge to two of the outstanding people at our football club to see um, if they can take us to, to where we want to be and that is uh, the ultimate success and, and it's kind of nice I guess uh, the chairman's already mentioned um, I think that the club is now building a history and a bit of a tradition and it's, it's nice that the club's only had three captains and they're all still at the club you know one as a coach and the other two in, in the playing squad and I guess uh, you know, they're the kind of things that, that help you build uh, traditions and, and cultures and uh, you know hopefully today's announcement adds further to that. Mark Milligan, what does it mean to you that you uh, give the captain the biggest club in the country? I think, as um, as, as Andrew said, it's uh, it's uh, it's a definitely a, a challenge for me this year to um, to set my game up and uh, to take the team. I think we we've made it very public that that last season we we fell short of of what we aimed for, and uh, this year, you know, we. We, we really want to create that that winning culture with um, there's a lot of young boys that that now need to step up to to build that winning culture from now on and, and into the future so to be able to lead that team this year is obviously um, I, I feel a great privilege to be able to do that but but again I don't think it, it's just me there's um, there's a few of us in in the, the older category so it's um, definitely still going to be a, a team effort to to build the winning culture amongst amongst a very young team and um, something that we can take into the future as well. Mike, is it something that you pursued? Is it something that you wanted to do as being captain of the Melbourne Victory? Uh, not, not specifically. I think um, in my career since I was younger, uh, I've been fortunate enough to, to captain uh, a couple of teams on a few occasions um, at Sydney as well a few times and obviously with the Oli Roos. So uh, it's... Um, yeah, I guess not something that that I chased, but something that I've been uh, lucky enough or been given the opportunity to do a few times. So yeah, obviously it's uh, something that that I enjoy doing, and um, as I say, hopefully hopefully now having it here, it's, uh, it can take my game to another level and uh, and the team. Oh, there was a lot of speculation in the transfer window linking you with Crystal Palace, particularly in the Premiership. Deal didn't come through. How big a disappointment for you was that, and has that sort of impacted on your preparation or your mindset now as you prepare for a new A-League season? Oh, no, definitely not. I don't think I don't think uh, disappointment's uh, probably the correct word for it. I mean, uh, throughout the the whole, I guess, um, negotiations, it was uh, you know made clear that from from a very young age, obviously, I've I've wanted to be able to to go to the Premier League and play, but. Um, you know, we were all very open with each other, and uh, a lot of discussions took place on it. And at, at no stage did I did I want the club to uh, let me go for. <clears throat> I guess I didn't want them to shortchange themselves as well. Um, I'm very happy here in Melbourne. Uh, I wanted to make sure that um, that the club was 
was doing things for, for their reasons as well. I didn't want to put any added pressure um, on the situation. But as I say, you know, it's, uh, it, it has been clear for a long time and for a lot of footballers that that, that, that was the dream. So, as I say, the, the final decision was, was left with Melbourne. And, um, you know, the outcome is, is what the outcome is. Uh, and as I say, again, I've, I've made it very publicly known that I, I am very happy here. My family is very happy here. And uh, it was just a situation that um, I think I needed for it to run its course. And is it a concern given that um, the most of the class of the player that, that might get sent up at some stage? Is it a concern that you, you might go and might be a bit shorter to Every possibility, yeah, and, and it's something that we've obviously factored into our planning. But you know, we can't we can't think that way. Look, I I certainly believe, um, you know, I, I think it's not the last time we'll hear from a Premier League club about Mark for sure. And uh, you know, if he has a season that he had, that I think he, I believe he can and, and takes his game to another level, then there is every likelihood that he won't be around longer term. But you know, again. Part of the, giving him the captaincy is now to, to tie and take him to that next level. And if he does, then, then that's great. We, we'll take great pride in that. We, you know, again, from our behalf, it wasn't a matter of us uh, not wanting Mark to go or any of our footballers to go. Uh, we want ambitious people through our football club. Um, but, you know, as Mark said, that there was uh, a negotiation there to be had. And, and the beauty of it is, we, you know, Mark was absolutely professional throughout it and, and was willing to take the decision uh, whichever way it came. And, um, but I certainly don't think it's uh, that door's closed. If anything, I think you'll probably have more options, and, and we'll deal with that when it comes along again. But uh, in the meantime, you know, while he's here, um, we want to make sure that uh, a, you know, we we benefit from his uh, from him being here both on and off the field. But more importantly, you know, he takes his game to another level. And like I said, I'm hoping uh, leading our football club will, will do that. Actually, there was a lot of speculation that today might have been announcing the signing of the Melbourne player. Is that why you're here, Sarah? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, no, look, obviously, it's um, that's obviously there's been a lot of speculation about the marquee position for us. Um, we're actively working on it, and uh, you know, I think people saw him with with Mark's deal. They're not, you know, they're not uh, cut and dried, and they're not simple. Um, we're we, we're in a position this year where we made a lot of changes to the squad last year. We, we had a major uh, upheaval of our playing roster, and, and this year I had the luxury of maybe only having to sign two or three players, and, and we've been pretty selective about who we bring in, and uh, and the marquee spots the same. I, I think because it's such a long off season, I think people probably think that we've taken too long, but you know, signing somebody three or four weeks before a start of season that's absolutely normal everywhere in the world and uh, so you know I, I, I'm pretty confident there'll be an announcement in the coming days about it we're, we're really close uh, to a couple of players but um, until it's done um, let the speculation continue and uh, I love the list of names that keeps coming up because it uh, <laughs> excites me even further it's great it's obviously an important decision it is yeah no I don't, I don't think we need to rush it um, you know, our game style is pretty much set in stone now, and, and you know, 90 percent of the players have been with us for, for two years now and, and know it. Um, hopefully, the new player will be a quality player, and it'll just be the final sort of piece in our jigsaw. So that's why I'm not. I was never in any hurry to bring him too early. And to be honest, if you ask, you know, a, a foreigner to come here and do a three-month pre-season, I reckon they would put him off pretty quickly. Um, so I'm trying to convince them it's just a normal three or four week pre-season if we sign them now and uh, um, but it is an important decision for our club and it'll be somebody who we think is a good fit for what this for our club needs at the moment as Mark said we've got a really young group you know we need some experience and, and, and you know I think I've made it pretty publicly uh, known that you know we, we need some more depth in our defensive stock so that'll be the, the kind of person we're looking for.